Welcome to Counters. If you've wondered what the difference is between input VAT and output VAT, then in this video you should be able to get your answer. Or if you want to know more details on input VAT and output VAT, then you should be able to get it here, hopefully. So we know that the VAT or value added tax as it's known is the tax added to the cost of a product or service and is levied for purposes of generating revenue for the government. Obviously, we know that there are products and services which require VAT to be charged for VAT vendors or for those who are registered for VAT in order to generate revenue for the government. Input VAT is VAT which is included in the price when you purchase vetable goods or services for your business and is claimed back if your business is registered as a VAT vendor. That is exactly what input VAT is. It's included when you are the one who is purchasing. And you would see this if you're purchasing even from uh, a retail shop or from the supermarket when you go and buy uh, some items you will see the vat amount which appears there so it's included when you are purchasing that's why i highlighted the word purchase there it's when you are buying that is when you are paying the amount inclusive of the vat and when i use the word vet vendor here vet vendor is someone who is registered with the revenue authority for vet purposes meaning you are registered in order to collect vat on behalf of the government by charging the vat on top of your products and services and you can claim back the vat that you've been paying on your purchases so that is for those who are registered as vet vendors so if you'd like to know more about the registration for vat you'll find the link to that video in the description below otherwise you'll see it appearing on the screen at the end of this video so you have to remember input vet is when you are the one who is purchasing and you should know that obviously with vat only vet vendors can charge vat on their products and services and what is output VAT? Well, output VAT is VAT which is included in the price when selling vetable goods or services if your business is registered as a VAT vendor. And I've already mentioned that you can only charge VAT if you are registered as a VAT vendor and recognized as such by the Revenue Authority. And in South Africa, it's SARS. The VAT collected is then paid out to the Revenue Authority. So here, what do I mean by vetable? I've mentioned vetable goods or services. Well, we know that not all goods and services are subject to VAT. Some are zero rated and some are exempt. All right. But those ones which are not exempt, which would be most goods and services, then they would be subject to VAT. So output VAT is the one that you are charging as a business if you are registered as a VAT vendor. So when you're selling your products and services and you've charged VAT on top of your selling price, then that VAT is known as output VAT. Why is it known as output VAT? Well, it's VAT that you will take and pay it over to the revenue authority. And like I said, it's obviously generating revenue for the government. So whatever VAT that you're charging on top of your products or services, you know that money is not for you, the VAT portion. So you have to take it and pay it over to the revenue authority that is why it's output vet so i hope you are able to appreciate the difference between input vet and output vet the way it simplifies it for me i remember when i was a student for me to remember what is input vet and what is output vet when i look at it from my perspective in relation to the revenue authority output vet is money which will be going out to the revenue authority meaning i will collect it from my customer and pay it over to the revenue authority input vet is the money which is coming in from the revenue authority because i claim it from the revenue authority so i hope that makes sense now here are more things that you need to remember with input and output vet and their differences input vet is therefore an asset because it is claimed back from the revenue authority i've already mentioned that you're claiming it back from the revenue authority therefore whatever input vet you have you will recognize it as an asset okay it's an asset account so you must remember that it's always an asset it will not be a liability the only time that you reverse the transaction is if the goods or services that you've purchased you're now returning it back for some reason then you have to reverse the input vet okay so you have to cancel it out but input vet is an asset and will always be an asset because it's something that belongs to you even though you're paying it to whoever you're buying from if they're charging you vat and you are a vet vendor you know that you'll receive it back because you'll go and claim it from the revenue authority so it's yours it belongs to you that is why it's an asset 
Output VAT, on the other hand, is a liability because it has to be paid or it's owed to the revenue authority. Remember, when you're charging someone for your goods and services and you're a VAT vendor and you've charged VAT, even though you'll be collecting that money, you know the output VAT portion does not belong to you, as I've already mentioned. It has to go to the revenue authority. That is why it's a liability, something that does not belong to you and has to be paid over to the revenue authority. Again, obviously, if you have to reverse it, maybe you are returning, uh, maybe your customers are returning goods to you that they had purchased from you, then you would reverse also the VAT portion. But output VAT will always be a liability. So if your input VAT is greater than your output VAT, you will receive a refund of the difference from the revenue authority because it means that you have paid more VAT than you have received from your sales. All right. So what does this mean? Well, you will do your VAT schedules and have your input VAT for all the monies that you've been paying out from your purchases and see how much is the total input VAT for the period, let's say for the month. And you will do the same for your output VAT. How much have I charged? for the sales that I've made and you compare the two. If your input VAT is greater, then you will receive a refund of the difference, all right? So let's say your input VAT is 100,000 Rand and your output VAT is 80,000 Rand. That means that you will receive 20,000 Rand, which is the difference between the two from the revenue authority, all right? That is what you will receive. Conversely, if your output VAT is greater than your input VAT, you owe the difference to the revenue authority because you would have received more VAT on your sales than would have paid on your expenses. So you can see here, it should make sense if you understood the first one. So if your output VAT is greater, that means you collected more VAT than you actually paid out. So the difference, you compare your output VAT to your input VAT is what you pay to, your, to the revenue authority. So let's say your output VAT is 50,000 Rand and your input VAT is 40,000 Rand. That means the 10,000 Rand difference is what is going to be paid over to the revenue authority. This is the difference between input VAT and output VAT. Obviously, we've looked at it in a nutshell, but I hope it has made sense. I hope you've gained value from this lesson. If you'd like to understand more on VAT, you can check out the videos that will appear on your screen just now. Or you'll find the links to those lessons in the description below where we look at the registration for VAT, but we also look at how to calculate the VAT. If you have gained value from this lesson, consider subscribing to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.